Okay, hello everybody. Today what we're gonna do is we are going to work with MongoDB, ExpressJS, and the EJS template engine to show you how you can pull things out of MongoDB um, through an ExpressJS web server and display them on the screen using uh, EJS templates. Now, um, this was a request from somebody that uh, I've been working and helping with offline. And I wanted to show, sometimes when you do videos like this, um, well, not sometimes, most of the time, they're very prepared, like I'll go through it, make sure I understand it, write like a mini script and flow through it. And it, it gives the impression that I know what I'm talking about and I am extremely talented and capable of all these things when really it's just a little bit of preparation and a script that I'm following through. And so what I wanted to do with this is to show the process that I go through when I'm trying to answer questions like this and help people because I didn't really know the answer to this myself. Um, <clears throat> and so I, I'll just show you how I would go about figuring it out and making it work. Now, certainly I have had experience using MongoDB and ExpressJS. Um, I've never really done anything with EJS, but um, so it helps to, you know, as you just build experience and you do these things over and over, uh, you go through that learning curve and you pick things up and you know the right things to search for and ask and Google is your very best friend. Like Google knows how to do everything. And it's just a matter of, taking it out of Google and kind of processing it through your brain, understanding it, and then getting it into your own project. And so uh, I just wanted to show that. Hopefully it'll be um, valuable to some of you out there. So um, the, the question is, I want to take a collection from MongoDB and pull out the items and display them on a web page when I hit an endpoint and I want to use EJS templates to loop through those things that I pull out of the database and display them on screen. Now, caveat to this video, I am not a front end developer. I am quite terrible at designing user interfaces. So this is going to be raw HTML and it'll be left up to you to figure out how you want to use bootstrap or, um, I can't remember what some of the other frameworks are. That's how not front end I am uh, for how you would want to make that look nice and pretty because that's that's not my thing. I'm not going to show that. I'm just going to show how to get raw HTML to the page that you can then um, figure out how to style and make pretty yourself. So let's get started from the last video you saw. I was showing you how to set up Docker with uh, sorry, Mongo with Docker. I always say those two words backwards, how to set up Mongo with Docker. And so um, down here in my <clears throat> uh window my shell window i'm gonna do docker ps dash a remember that's your favorite docker command and you'll see this is the container i set up i know it's cut off because of my picture but this is the mongo it's the it's a mongo image and it's exited and the name of it which is right where my head is on the screen is mongodb and we need to start that back up so the thing we're going to do is say mongo uh, not mongo gosh why do i get those two mixed up Docker container start MongoDB. <clears throat> and now if we run a Docker PS A, you'll see that the uptime is three seconds right here. And uh, Mongo's running. Mongo's running on my sh machine. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to seed the database with some data. So to do that, I can just do Docker exec, which means I want to ex execute a command inside of a container. Dash TI says I want to do it interactively. So show me the output from the container and let me type input into it. Uh, the name of the container, which is MongoDB, and the process, like the command I want to execute inside that container is just Mongo, which is the Mongo shell. So I type that in, and it's going to drop me right into a Mongo shell. I apologize, this is all going to happen at the bottom of the video, um, but we'll just be a few minutes. So from our last video, you, I have this MyDB that we created, and so I'm going to say use MyDB to get into it. I created a collection called devices. So let's just do uh, db.devices.find. Okay, and you see I have a device that says, uh, so I don't like that, I'm, let's let's get rid of that. Let's do db.devices. Okay, so I know that you can delete items through the shell. I can't remember what the command is. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm just gonna Google search. Mongo shell, Mongo shell quick reference right here. 
uh, basic CRUD commands are going to be down here somewhere. Okay, delete one. There we go. Or delete many. I wonder if I could just do delete many and just pass it an empty query. So like this, delete many, and then just pass it like delete everything that matches that. Okay, there you go. Acknowledge, true. Deleted count equals one. Perfect. Um, so now if I do db.devices.count, it's going to say zero. Great. So now let's insert some stuff. So let's do db devices dot insert one and remember this is just json that you're going to insert here so i'm going to give this a name and i'm going to call it the dht22 <clears throat> sensor and then let's give it some other properties like um well it's going to have a temperature so let's say the temperature is like 85 degrees it's also going to have humidity so let's do that humidity uh, 80% humidity, let's call it. And that's it. So we'll do that. Inserted true. And then I'm going to just up and then let's add another DHT22. And let's say this one's, so that one is kind of like outside type things. And I want to show kind of how we can, one of the things that's cool about Mongo is the documents don't have to follow a specific schema. Like you can add random fields and I want to show how we can handle that um, back in Express.js. So uh, let's say the temperature here is nice 65 and the humidity is, you know, whatever, 40 because the location of this one is inside. It's in the, I don't know, the office like that. Okay, great. And then, um, well, I think that's, uh, that's good for now. Well, let's add one more. <laughs> let's add one more. Hard this. Let's call this one the temp 36 sensor. It only does temperature. Temp 36. We'll say that the temperature on this one is like 73 degrees. It does not have humidity because it's just a temp sensor. And oh, it took my, I didn't have to quote that. That's cool. Location is, we'll call this the garage. <clears throat> Okay, so now if we do db.devices.count, we've got three db.devices.find. Uh, there they all are. Um, two of them have a location, one of them doesn't, and then they have different things, like the two DHT22s have temperature and humidity, and the temp36 just has temperature. So, great. That's all we're going to do in the Mongo shell. Let's go ahead and exit, clear to give ourselves something. And then I have, I'm in VS Code, Use whatever editor you want or you like. And I have an empty folder here. There's nothing in this folder. So I do need to install a couple of things that I know I'm going to need for this. So I'm going to npm install MongoDB because I need the MongoDB driver. I'm going to npm install Express or Express.js. See, I can't remember. So let's pull up Express.js. Express.js. Um... Let's see, getting started, installing. Okay, so it's just Express, it's not Express.js. Cool. So npm install Express. And that's it. That's all we need to get started. Now, uh, what we're gonna need is, you know, an app.js. Let's create that new file. And now I wanna get, the way I'm gonna start this is I'm going to, I'm going to just create, I'm going to come back over to Express.js and, you know, I'm going to come to Hello World and just grab this right here. Now, I know you can also use the Express.js generator. I'm not doing that here, as you can see. All right, so I've got Require Express, Hello World when I hit the regular endpoint, and I'm going to listen on port uh, 3000. Great, that's it. And so one thing that I always do when I'm messing around with this is you can get caught up writing too much code and then hoping, you know, hoping it all works at the end. Do this in small steps, like whether you're doing firmware, compile very frequently and run on stuff like this, run it and make sure that it's working. So I'm going to say node uh, app.js. Okay, it says it's listening. Let's come over to here 
and say localhost 3000. Great, hello world, perfect. So my Express.js server is working. I know that, you know, if I had written a whole bunch of code and then something was wrong and I hadn't installed Express or something right, now I'm digging through a lot more code to figure it out. So at this point, I know my Express.js is working. I can go ahead and close out of it. What's next? Well, there's a couple ways to approach this. Um, you could get Mongo working first, so getting um, Mongo documents pulled into your app first, or you could get the EJS piece working first. I like to do the display first because the, the data source is irrelevant, whether you're getting your data from MongoDB or from Redis or from Google's cloud or from a local database or local file or whatever let's make sure we can get things displaying first and then we'll worry about how to get it data into it and the way we'll do that is we'll just use dummy data for now and so um, let's create a new endpoint that's going to be our devices endpoint and see that we can actually get it to display data raw data like fixed static data that we pass it and then we'll worry about feeding the mongo stuff into it so um, the way express.js works is it's a waterfall so these uh, routes are evaluated in uh, sequentially so we need to put our route our new route up here and we'll just say it's the devices endpoint and same thing rec res and uh, we'll have a function here <clears throat> and in this function we want to render an EJS template and you know what am I gonna do I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say EJS um, templates and uh, is this it? EJS.co? Yeah, okay. Embedded JavaScript templating. Great. Get started. And I'm going to come down through here and then like this is an example of how it displays stuff. So you have all these kind of uh, alligator bracket type things. Um, but let's... Well, yeah, great. Let's just take this as the example. It's the very top one, fine. And by default, Express.js looks for a views folder. So let's um, create a folder, we'll call it views. And then underneath of that, we'll call this um, devices.ejs. That's the extension. And let's just uh, plop this in there. Fix the that, and then so with EJS you can write normal HTML, and then you mix in with it like this coded kind of like I say these percent less than equal thens so that you can write like JavaScript code in here. So let's do an H1 and say this is my devices page, and then if user user dot name. So if we don't pass anything to this, it should just render. So let's come back here and say um, res dot render. So res being the response, and then you pass it the the view that you want to render. In this case, it's just devices. Now you can say devices dot ejs, but it will figure it out. And so we'll just say render devices, and let's not pass it anything. Let's just see if that works. I don't know. Uh, node app.js says it's listening. Great. Let's pull this out to the end. Okay, hello world still works, but now we created a new slash devices endpoint. Okay. <clears throat> no default engine was specified. Okay. So it's saying I don't know how to render that because you didn't specify an engine. So let's come over here to the Express.js and do, okay, guide. Let's do guide using template engines. And then it talks about how to set the engine. Okay, right here, check this out. After the view engine is set, you don't have to specify the engine or load the template engine module in your app. Express loads the module internally as shown below. So we need to, set our view engine so let's grab that come back over here all the app.set stuff should be above all of your routes so let's just paste it in there app.set and, and we don't want to use pug we want to use ejs so let's just try that ejs let's close this and rerun it 
And let's try this again. Cannot find, oh, okay, cannot find module EJS. So cannot find module means we haven't installed it. So let's just try npm install EJS. Okay, so that installed EJS. Now let's let's try to run it again. Just just over and over. We just plug away at it. Um, devices. Oh, okay. So now, okay, we got user is not defined. So now we're it's trying to render it, but we're saying that user is not defined. So let's come back into here. And the way you pass to the render is you just pass it an object. So let's say user is me. I'm the user. Like that. <clears throat> so this is how we're going to pass data into the EJS template. And you can see it's just going to access it directly. So my user is Kevin. Close it. Unless you have a file watcher, you have to cancel out your, your server every time and relaunch it, relaunch the node process. Otherwise, you're going to make changes, refresh, and not see any difference, and you're going to get super frustrated. So make sure you're closing, killing the Node.js project, and then launching it again. So Node.js.app, or Node.js.app.js. And now, awesome. Okay, so sort of, sort of awesome. I got devices but i'm not getting my name oh okay see great let's let's see why it's saying user dot name well i have no dot name i'm surprised it didn't throw an error on that actually it's expecting user to be an object so let's change it to be that okay run this is what happens when you film a video that's not scripted and polished <laughs> so this is what it really looks like behind the scenes okay fifth times a charm boom okay great okay so now i've got now i've got my ejs rendering working i've got expressjs working i've got ejs working now i need to figure out well before we do that what we want to do is we want to display a list of devices on our template so let's do that before we even touch mongo okay so devices we don't want to display users we want to display a list of devices and so let's come back over to ejs and go to like docs there's got to be an example of like a uh well right here for each like yeah here yeah let's do something like this let's do let's copy this we want to loop through all the devices so let's get rid of that paste this code in great all right so we're going to start an unordered list and then we're going to say users.4h, but it's not users. We're going to have devices. Let's pass in devices. Devices.4h function, not user. Let's change this to device. And then let's display something. And let's get rid of this. I don't know what this include stuff is. But we're going to want to do an, a list item. And inside the list item, we're going to want to display something about the device. So let's just start with... Um, Let's just start with the device.name. Because remember, we added a name. If we like scroll way back up, I think, I don't know, it exited out. Okay. We added a name when we added them in our Mongo database earlier, if you were, if you remember back then. Okay, now, and then something here, this is not meant to be an EJS uh, tutorial, but you can see like right here we do open bracket percent, and here we're doing open bracket percent equals. Mm -hmm. Um, that was just, I spent like two minutes reading the very first page here where it explains right here what every tag does. And you'll see the percent by itself is just a scriptlet tag. So it's gonna like interpret JavaScript. The percent equals says outputs the value into the template HTML escape. So it handles HTML escaping for us. So <clears throat> that's all we're doing there. I think that's all we need to, I've got an extra thing there. I think that's all we need to do. So we pass in a list of devices and we're gonna, for each of them, we're gonna do device.name. And so back in our app, this is where we're just gonna use some dummy data. We're just gonna say let um, device list equal our own array. And we're gonna say this first one, it has a name of DHT22 and that's it. 
we don't need to mock up all the data. And then the second one is going to have a name of temp 36, whatever. Again, this is where we're just going to use dummy data to pass in to make sure everything's working. And then what we'll do is we'll come back and we'll figure out how to pull stuff out of Mongo and plug it into our template. So um, instead of passing in our user, Kevin, let's now pass in our device list. And what we're expecting here, sorry, we can't pass in device list. Sorry, we need to pass in back over here. It's looking for a something called devices in the object that's passed. And so what we need to do is we need to say uh, devices, device list like that. Um, I think this probably needs to be a string. I don't know. Let's just try it like this devices and then pull off our device list and try to render it. So let's kill our process and run it again. Come back over here. And sweet. Look at that. All right. Perfect. We got DHT 22 temp 36. All right. We've got express JS working. We've got EJS working, passing in the kind of data that we're going to pass to it for Mongo. Now let's database last, like get the dummy data working first and then figure out how to um, <clears throat> pipe it into the display. So great. Now somewhere in here, we need to get Mongo working. And so let's come over to, uh, not the Mongo shell, let's do, Mongo Node.js driver. Okay, Mongo Node.js driver, right here. And let's go to the usage guide. Um, quick start, let's go to the quick start. Okay, it's gonna say we have to install it. We already did that because we did that in a previous, I knew, I knew, I already knew I had to do that. And then here's the connect to Mongo code. Let's just copy this straight wholesale again this is not i wouldn't call this production code this is how you get it working and then you're going to go back through and look at all of the um, computer sciencey ways to make this cleaner and tighter and more abstracted and all of those great things this is we're just trying to get this to work okay so i'm going to come down and i'm going to paste all this in i am going to just because it's good practice i'm going to grab all of the consts and move them up to the top with the rest of our cons. So let's grab all these and put them underneath the, the express JS constants. Okay. Um, great. MongoDB, it's going to collect on, uh, connect on this. That's what our Docker container is hosting. The DB name, remember, is not my project. It's, uh, what was it? My DB? Yeah, my DB. And it's going to create a client. And then down here, it's going to connect. Now, something that you'll run into, and this is, again, where the experience of having done this before is helpful, is all of this stuff is asynchronous and callback driven, which means this client.connect is going to try to connect to the Mongo database, and then it's going to come back once it does. And so you can't do connect there, and then right down here, expect to, to do something with client as if it were connected to the database. That's not gonna work. So you have to kind of do this closure um, approach to everything. And so it's gonna say I'm successfully uh, connected successfully to, I hate when it says server. I'm gonna say Mongo database um, because we also have a web server running that can be confusing. And then I don't need to create this const db, db name yet. So I'm gonna actually cut that out I'm going to put it up here and just comment it out for now. Because all we want this to do is connect us to the database. But until we're connected to the database, we don't want our ExpressJS server to listen. So I'm going to grab this app.listen because we require the database to be working for the ExpressJS thing to do what we want it to. So we shouldn't even attempt to start our ExpressJS server if we don't have... <clears throat> the MongoDB connection. So once the Mongo database connection is established, then we're going to start listening on the ExpressJS port to host our, our web interface. So we'll do that. Now, there is still a race condition here. If you're starting this up and then somebody hits an endpoint before that's up, they're just going to get a, I don't know what they'll get. It's going to 
the server's not going to be there, so they'll get nothing. Like the page, it'll say like your internet's not working or something. But um, this will ensure that it's only running if we're connected to the database. Now, again, this, this doesn't do anything, but let's try to run it to make sure we don't get any errors. Okay, sweet. Look at this. Connected successfully to Mongo database and example app listening on port. Let's come back over here and test this. That still works. So everything still works. And now we have a connection to MongoDB, which is awesome. So now what we need to do is up here in our devices is we need to figure out how we're going to get our devices out of the database and shove that list into the EJS template instead of uh, our hard coded list here. So let's come back over to the Mongo. Um, this is quick start, insert a document. Ooh, find all documents. That's what we want to do. Um, I don't need this to be a function. So let's just grab the guts of this function. And let's just paste them in. Uh, we got some, okay. So let's, let's comment out our hard coded device list. So we're going to do collection. Well, collection isn't, oh, right here, const db.collection. So now this is where we need to re-grab our db that we set aside earlier. And again, you don't necessarily need to create a new const db every time. This is where, again, you would probably want to abstract away, keep track of your, your database reference somewhere outside of the route and just use it in the route um, so that you're not redeclaring the db and the collection every time. But I'll leave that as an exercise for you to Google and figure out um, how you might want to change that. This, But this is going to work. Um, it's just not the most... Uh, performant or resource friendly, uh, especially if you're having high load. But for something like what we're doing here, totally fine. So um, db equals client.db, collection equals db.collection.documents. Nope, it's not documents. Remember, we called our collection devices, so we're going to change that. And uh, remember, db name is just defined up here as my db. <clears throat> so you could either const declare it like this or pass it like that. It's not a big deal. Um, and then we're going to do collection.find. This says don't queer, like don't filter by anything. Just give me every document. And then we're going to change it into a, an array, to array. And then it's going to give us our error and docs. And let's just rename docs to devices because that's what we're returning. Or let's call it device list like we did before. Device list. Um, this just says that assert that there's not an error. We don't need to say that we found the following records. We also don't need to log them. And we don't have a callback that we need to call. So let's get rid of that. So when we get to this point right here, device list should be our list of devices. And so let's just try to cut this and paste it up in under here and see if that works. Device list, devices, yeah, I don't know. Let's try that. Um, let's clear and okay, connected to the database. Let's come back over here and let's see what we get. Oh, page isn't working. All right, so why isn't it working? Let's see. Mongo error pool destroyed. Um, okay. I don't know what that means. Pool destroyed. Okay, let's think about, let's. Uh, so the first thing we could do is we could say, Mongo error pool destroyed. Oops, you can't control C in, you gotta control shift C. I don't know, control shift C. I've never seen that error. That's a, that's a new one. Uh, server instance pool was destroyed. <clears throat> I forgot that the fact that uh, MongoDB closed was the issue. Oh, huh. you know what? I bet in the sample code, look at that. In there, this is, and this is the, the risk of copy paste in that connect. Look at this. It's trying to close. Like it's connecting and then it's closing it. Like we don't, we want to leave the connection open. So let's get rid of the close. Uh, okay, cool. Let's try it again. All right, and localhost, 
sweet. Look at that. DHT22, 22, temp36. So we've got our devices in there. We're displaying them. Um, let's try and do something. So you remember we had a location on one and not on the other, and they had different readings. So let's try and do, let's try and use that, like translate how Mongo can be very dynamic into how we might handle that. So let's, for each of these devices, let's, I, th I think what you can do is you can add like another, I'm not an HTML expert. Um, I think you can do a sub list just like this. Let's do that and just see what, let's see what happens. Um, sub list, does that work the way I'm thinking? Oh yeah, sweet. Okay, so let's let's take for each device. Let's now just display what all of the properties are on that device that we have in the database. Um, we can do it just like this, and now it's just kind of pattern matching like we did before. We're gonna do a for each, or something like a for each anyway, right here. So let's do that, and then we're gonna need to close it like this. Um, and let's just, how can we get, get all, um, whatever, not params, what is it? Members, JavaScript, object. How can I get, so get own property names. Oh, or object.keys should work. I think either one of these returns an array of all properties. Oh, including non enumerable properties. So I don't know that we want to do that. I think there's object dot. Let's try object dot keys. Given an object's own enumerable property names. So we're just going to call object dot keys. So let's just try this. Let's do. <clears throat> let's do. I don't know. Can we just do something like object dot keys? Is that how? Is that the syntax? Object dot keys, and then you pass it the object. So object dot keys of every device, which should return a list of those. Then do a for each. We'll call this the key. And then let's do a list item here, and we'll say. Um, for each list item, let's just display it. I something like this, and we'll say uh, device key. So for every device, we're going to loop through the keys on that device, and then we're going to display that key. I think that should do it. I don't know. Let's let's try that. Uh, node app.js, and let's see what we get. Oh, sweet. Okay, sweet. Um, so now it's displaying the keys. Okay, let's, uh, so it's displaying all the values, but not the key name. So let's just, let's make that a little, let's say, let's do two of these. Um, jerk, like that. We'll, we'll display the key name. Oh, you know, we can even, this is where like, you know, let's do strong and make it bold. Um, we'll grab this, put it inside of here, do a little colon, and then, so we'll display the name of the key and then the value of it. I think that should work. Um, okay. Oh, this is gonna work. Yes, okay, all right. So sweet, here we go. We've got all of our devices listed, THT, the two DHT22s and the temp36. You can see that this one has a location, this one doesn't, um, <clears throat> and they have different properties, right? Like this one, these have temperature and humidity because that's how we added them. And this one just has a temperature. And let's say we want to update our, this DHT22 to have a location. <clears throat> Let's try and do it right on the fly. Let's come into VS Code here, open up a new shell. Let's exec our Docker. Oh, we're gonna have to go way too many commands up. Let's go, oh, D Career, what's up, man? Thanks for joining. 
just finishing up here. Okay, let's do docker exec dash ti. Um, MongoDB is the name of the container and we'll say Mongo. And let's do use mydb. What? What am I doing wrong here? Show dbs mydb. Oh, I us my us my db. Use my db. And now let's do db dot devices dot find. And then, okay, this is the one that doesn't have a location. Let's just grab the ID of it and query it by that. Oh, you can't control C, darn it. Shift C, let's go back into it. <clears throat> uh, Decreer, I am making a kind of an internet of things example of how we would store records in MongoDB and then pull them out of MongoDB and display them through Express.js using EJS templates. That was a lot of words. So um, learning HTML, it's not, it, this is the extent of the HTML that we've got in here. So there's not a ton that we're doing with that, but just showing how you can use templates. And if you're just learning HTML, um, this is gonna be kind of weird because I'm using a templating engine. So all these crazy percent sign things are not gonna be standard HTML. So just be aware of that. Um, Okay, so back in Mongo, yeah, I, yeah, I got to go through the because I exited out on accident. Use my DB, and now we're gonna do DB dot devices dot find. Okay, and now we have to Control Shift C to get the object ID of this guy. Okay, and then I think we can just do something like var um, sensor equals db.devices.find1 and I th think I can just put the ID like that. Is that gonna work? Yeah, okay, great. And now I've got, so sensor is now that object and I can say sensor.location equals, we'll call this being in the garden. And let's take a look at it. Now it has garden and now we have to update it, which I believe is db.devices.save. And then I can just pass it again because it, um, because it has the object ID on it. It should just upsert it, I think, or modify it. Okay, cool. Right result, it matched one, it found it because I have the ID on it and it says n modified one. And so now if we do a db.devices.find, you'll see that that now has, they all have locations, garden, office, and garage. And so we've made that change live in our database. I never shut down the web server. The Express.js is still running. So let's come back out here and let's do, just refresh it. And then boom, your location shows up on the fly. So that is, <clears throat> what did that take? 38 minutes. So a little bit longer, longer form. Again, it wasn't scripted. I didn't have a script written for this, just an idea of what I wanted to accomplish. And then that's kind of the process that I go through. We've got, we're pulling records out of Mongo um, from Express.js using EJS templates to display that data. And this is what you get now. Again, it's up to the viewer to figure out how they want to make this beautiful using a, a UI framework. Um, that's not, I, not my forte. I'm not good at that. I can get the I can get the data to you. I need somebody else more creative and artistic to make it look good. So um, that is how you would accomplish that. And again, it's just this process of incrementally trying things. A lot of close rerun, close rerun, close rerun, googling um, until you just you make a little bit of progress. Again, I highly recommend when you're first starting with database stuff, use hard coded things first to make sure your display engine is working and then worry about querying the database to get the information that way. So um, that is going to do it for uh, today's stream. Hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions, uh, I'll post this to YouTube, stick them in the comments down below. Happy to try and answer any of those. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching and have a good one.